Hello guys, I'm back. I've got few questions about how I permix colors before paintings, so I've designed to make the video to explain how I permix colors and how to use my value finder to match the color. In this video, I will use two printed references for color mixing to create skin tones. It took me a while to create this video, but I hope it will be helpful to you. Without seeing that there are millions of the different flesh tones in the world, it's impossible to replicate every color you have seen. So how can we identify the color? What's the effective way to mix those colors? We need to know three important criteria about color before we paint. The first property is hue. Hue refers to the property of the color defined by its position on the visual spectrum. We divide the visual spectrum into three principal hues and the various intermediate hues. Then we have a value which determines the lightness or darkness of the color. Each color in the world has its particular value. As I just mentioned, it's not necessary to mix any color value you have seen. We just need to find the tonal values to create our value and the depths. So we divided all those gray values into five basic regions which we call the five value systems. I always start my permixing the value on my palette. If you can't determine the correct value, your painting may lose its realism. To help identify the different color values, I always use Value Finder, which functions like a ruler to improve the accuracy of my paintings. And then we have to talk about the chroma, which indicates the intensity or saturation of the color. And the different color express their highest at different values. So a color is more intense or chromatic, the further away it is from gray. As you can see, the name of the color is not an effective way to help us mix colors. So the best way is to work with a limited palette. My palette consists of titanium white, cadmium yellow, cadmium red, pastel blue, and every black. It also creates a large wide range of the natural blue through grays. This color combination poly, I call it VCH poly. When we use this poly for mixing skin tones, we don't need to use Fela Blue because it is overpowering and saturated. As you can see, just add a little bit white into every black. This kind of the grayish blue more towards our skin tones. This poly functions as a limited primary palette. So we use cadmium yellow as our yellow, cadmium red as our red, and every black as our blue. However, while every black does function as our blue, it has a very neutral and weak saturation. You may be hard to see, but by adding just a little bit of the white, you can see all of those colors. Meantime, we use this cooler hue as our dark value, simplifying your neutralizations. So when using this palette to mix colors, it's important to consider their interaction with surrounding colors to enhance the visual impact. Color can only be intensified through direct color and temperature relationships. For instance, to mix a gray feel as cold as it can get, you must surround it with a warm temperature. The gray feels cooler when the temperature around is warmer. To create the same gray feel warmer, you need to place a cooler tone around it. Therefore, this palette is an ideal foundation for creating figures and portraits, especially for rendering human flesh. I always permix those colors on a value scale to create skin tones ranging from light to dark. I want to emphasize that what I want to show is an easy way to train our eyes to find the color tones, especially for beginners. In this way, you can train your eyes to identify and replicate color tones more effectively. I encourage you to do your experiments, work with references, and practice as much as possible to improve. Once you get used to it, you can always use other color paints like burnt sienna or yellow ochre to build your palette. So let's get it started. I always start with my value finder to match the colors. As you can see, my hand is close to the value 8. So the first step is to mix gray. I started with some Titanium White and just a little bit of the Ivory Black, which is a little bit shifted towards the blue and a little cooler. Because our eyes can be easily fooled by color, so I use this tool to compare surrounding values. The next step is to use Cadmium Red and then Cadmium Yellow to mix the hue. As you can see, this color is too dark to compare the value 8. So I added some Titanium White to light it up until it has the same lightness as the value 8. 
So to find the correct value, the best way is to squint your eyes. When you squint, you animate the color, and all you can see is the tone differences. In this way, we got the two same value colors. But this base color was too warm compared to my hand, so I added a small amount of the gray to cool down this color. It's interesting that when you mix different colors with the same values, the resulting mixture always has the same value as well, regardless of the proportions of the gray colors. Now it's ended up much close to my hand. Right. I have my reference printed out, and this will be my guide for getting accurate colors. The first color I decide on was the lightest color value on her forehead by comparing this area, which was closer to value of eight. So, firstly, I took some titanium white with a little bit of every black to achieve this value. Then I moved on to mixing the base skin color by using cadmium red and cadmium lemon. Since the forehead bone area is closer to the surface and has a slightly yellow tint, I adjusted color by adding more titanium white and cadmium lemon to move it towards value eight. In this way, we got two colors of the same value. As you can see, this base color was too warm, so I decided to add some gray to cool down a little bit. By comparing the color on my palette knife to the specific point in my reference, I ended up with a color that matched it. The next color I chose was the center light on the cheeks. Upon comparing to the reference, you can kind of say that much closer to the value five. So the same process, I took some titanium white with a little bit of ivory black to achieve this value. Then I move on to mixing the base skin color. I took a large amount of the cadmium red and just a little bit of the cadmium lemon. The color ended up being too dark to match the value 5, so I added slightly titanium white to adjust the value. Because on the cheek area, there's more blood. If you come from outside in winter time, these zones are really red. Also, when you cry, the nose and eyes will turn red as well. Then comparing with the reference, it was too chromatic, so I added a little bit of the gray to cool down a little bit. I continued adjusting it slightly here until I got the color close enough to the reference. Now I'm moving to the chin area. As you can see, the apicular iris has a more yellow tone, where it appears more grayish towards the transition from the light to its sort of the middle value. To achieve this, I started mixing gray and base skin color together. Then I add a lot of cadmium lemon to bring it slightly greener and more yellowish tone. And after comparing it, I add just a little bit of every black to darken it slightly. Finally, I got the color close enough to match for me, where I can always alter and change them as I paint. The next color I'm aiming for her face is completely blocked off from the light source, which was coming from the left light. Now I'm gonna start on the color as you can see, maybe close to the value 3. So the same process, I took a little bit of the titanium white with more ivory black to achieve this value. Then I moved on to mixing the base skin color. I took a large amount of the cadmium red and just a little bit of the cadmium lemon. As you can see, this color has a very similar value through comparison. So it's not necessary to add more white to change its value. I add gray directly into this warm color after comparing with the reference. I think that is still not enough to the shade. So I add a little bit ivory black to make this color darker and more base skin color into it. Finally, I got the color close enough to match for me. 
The next color is the darkest in the skin, always the shade of the eyelid and the nostril. As you can see, that color is close to the value one. So I took some tartan white with a little bit of ivory black to achieve this value. Then I move on to mixing the base skin color. I took a large amount of the cadmium red and just a little bit of the cadmium lemon because when light passes through the skin, it undergoes a phenomenon called subsurface scattering. In certain areas, such as the thin cartilage of the nostril, where the skin is relatively thin, light may pass through more easily. As it passes through, it can illuminate the darker shade of the nostril with a warm glow. So I just add a little bit of the gray to it. The color ended up being a very good match, so I put it on the palette. Once the skin tone were done, I proceeded with the underpainting to establish the basic shapes before adding colors. I placed and blended colors, focusing on the major color groups rather than mixing each color. These foundational colors will serve as a solid base, allowing me to make necessary adjustments as I progress with the painting. 